Ready to sort through more horror novels with me? I'm Michelle, this is my Romantic Tangle, and this is the other box that I brought down from the attic. I can already see one duplicate from the books my mom sent over, and I have, as usual, no idea what was in here because I boxed it up probably close to 30 years ago. And I cannot wait to see what's in here. Let's start with Nightfall by John Ferris. That's a fun cover that's got kind of a gothic romance look to it. But it says the angel of death is coming, and I know Ferris is a horror author. Hellstone by Stephen Sprill. The Game by Lynn Phillips. This poor book is in terrible shape, but out of the river into the past in Granny's Game, Death Comes Fast. Resurrects It by Linda C. Ross. That's another of those great embossed leisure covers. The Diviner by Marilyn Harris. It had been waiting in the darkness where love and horror meet, and this one presumably came from the library book sale, so I have no description. I think Goodreads will help me out with that. Clive Barker's Great and Secret Show, Teacher's Pet by Andrew Niederman, Evil Dreams by John Teagues. Love the cover. That's another, yep, that's another former library copy. And honestly, I want to read the books. I'm not going to get overly worried about their condition. Gale Warning, a ghost vessel rises from a watery wartime grave to become a deadly outlaw ship. So, says Ghost, does that make it horror? It's got a cover price of 60 cents. Oh, I don't think this is actually a ghost chip. Bone Grinder by John Lutz. The Fury by John Ferris. Lots of evil kids in my collection. The Tea Party by Charles L. Grant. First The Exorcist, then The Omen, now Damon. This is the second book I found with a green star on it, so that was someone else's coding system, maybe? Now I'm curious about that. Cry Wolf by Alan B. Cronister. That is a fun cover. The Moonchild by P Kenneth McKenney. Sandman by Linda Crockett. The Horror Club by Mark Morris. Shattered Moon by Kate Green. When Nothing is What It Seems, There's Nowhere to Hide. And again, thanks to the library book sale, I can't tell you if that's horror or not. John Ferris, Son of the Endless Night. I was going to say I didn't know if that was horror, but uh, yeah. The Sunday by William Woolfolk. The future is here. The horror is now. Abyssos by Raymond Hardy. The cult had survived for thousands of years. Can duel and destroy the devil god before it kills him. Okay, that is the least appealing sounding synopsis so far. Dreamland by Garfield Reeves Stevens. Grim Memorials by R. Patrick Gates, and this one I am. Well, I thought I had a vivid memory of reading that one, but now that I read the description, I have no idea. Soul Catchers by Jan Laura. Oh, we got a V.C. Andrews in there, Seeds of Yesterday. I read a few of those back in the day because I think everybody did. The House of Thunder by Leigh Nichols. It's another step back. And is that a syringe? That is a syringe. Accident amnesia did come back to life. Sure. Black Ashes by Noel Scranlon. The evening evil in the house is only the beginning. And that thing makes me think of Ebenezer Scrooge. The Crone, that's one of the ones Mom had in her box. 
The Forsaken by Cameron Reed. Carrion by Gary Brandner. Dead to the World by J.N. Williamson. Dean Koontz. Necronomicon. Okay, there is no author. Yeah, I think this is claiming to be the Necronomicon. Sure it is. My sons will appreciate that. Someone's Watching by Andrew Niederman. Allison's Baby. Living Things. The Soft Whisper of the Dead. The Next by Bob Randall. Love Can Turn a Boy into a Man. Evil Can Do It Faster. Ooh, Home Sweet Home by Ruby Jean Jensen. She was one of my favorites back in the day. Addison House by Claire McNally. The Visitor, An Unforgettable Experience in Horror. Black Magic by Whitley Stryber. Creature by Drake Douglas. That's another one. Some of these we just must have had a lot of copies through the bookstore. Because there are some covers that just immediately grab me and make me remember I don't know what. The Demon, a novel by Her Hubert Selby Jr., author of Last Exit to Brooklyn. A shocking, shattering novel of obsession, devastating, dark, perfect. That tells me nothing about the book. A Stranger is Watching by Mary Higgins Clark. Ooh, Sandman by William W. Johnstone. And is this, yep, this is the copy. I bought this one for, new and I had it in my book bag. Got a pop out of the vending machine and did not open it. Put it in the bag to walk to work with. Back when Diet Coke only came in cans from the vending machine. And the machine put just enough of a pinhole that I didn't notice there was a problem and destroyed my book in the process. I was actually hoping my mom would have another copy of this one. I had no clue. I still had my copy. I don't remember the book. I just remember being upset about damaging the book. Toplin by Michael McDowell. A step back cover on that one. Totentaz by Al Sarantino. I can't remember if I read that one or if I just loved the cover. Graveyard by Mason Burgess. The Sentinel. I'm sure, it's by someone. Jeffrey Krovitz, and it had a step back at one point. Mama's Little Girl, She'll Love You to Death. The Entity, I think that one was a big bestseller back in its day. Hobgoblin by John Coyne. Better Used Books by Grannies in Springfield. I don't remember that store. Graham Masters. Ten Death Trance. I read a lot of his back in the day. Another Grandmaster to Night Warriors. Death Angel by J.N. Williamson. There's another of those pretty embossed covers. And Grandmaster to Feast. I remember this one, and I remember being grossed out by this one. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I kept that one. Night Hunter by Robert Falcon. One man against the monstrous forces of evil. That doesn't sound good. Ghouls by Edward Lee. Triad, a new novel of su the supernatural by Mary Leader. For the millions of readers who enjoyed The Exorcist. Okay, that's going on the pile of things I want to read. And Land's End by Anne D. LeClaire. Well, these are all in terrible condition, but you know, if after reading paperbacks from hell and getting excited about vintage horror again, I've got just reading copies that I can read, I am super happy about that. And if you're wondering 
why I have so many books that I haven't read. I used to work in a used bookstore when I was in high school. And even though I was reading a book or two a day back in those days, I bought books way faster than I read them. If there is something here that you have read and know is terrific, please leave me a recommendation in the comments down below. I am honestly surprised at how many of these I kept because I usually did trade things in after I was done reading them so I could get more books because that old paperback exchange bookstore model was the best. Especially back in the day when used bookstores would take books that weren't perfect and weren't brand new. I'm Michelle. This is my Romantic Tangle. Thanks for watching. I will see you again very soon.